My name is Lindsay Smith and I'm the director of the Magic Gift Foundation. Um, we're a social enterprise that's set up to give children who don't have as much access to imaginative expression more room for that and creativity. And we really believe in the power of if, because if you can imagine a better future, then you can create it. Safe Spaces is a project that we delivered in Betkahel near Hebron in Palestine in July 2011. We delivered a week's worth of workshops to children um, from a village and the workshops took place in a park with the theme of safety. As well as being with the children during the workshop delivery time, one of the nicest things we did was travel to and from the park every day with the children in a big group. So the children would wait outside our house for us every morning and then we'd all walk together and sometimes if we were lucky somebody would stop with a van or a truck and we'd all jump in the back and drive off to the park. That was good fun. It's kind of crazy because for health and safety, you would never ever get away with that in this country. But of course you can get away with it a little bit in the Middle East. And I have to say, it was a blast being in the back of a truck in the open air with a load of kids. Some children even brought their donkey to ride home on. And here you can see Ahmed riding home with his friend on their donkey, Alma. The workshops were all themed on safety and some of the content was therapeutic. Um, all of the content was playful and designed to give children greater imaginative expression. Again. Bravo, bravo. Oh, bravo. Very good. Oh, yeah, measures. Get measures. Get measures. Hey, bravo. Winner. Yay. Bravo. One of the things I wasn't prepared for was how enthusiastic the children would be and that once given an opportunity to express themselves that they just wanted to show us more and more and more of their own work. So by day three we had to really rewrite the programme because they'd all created plays in their own time or wanted to come and read us the poetry that they'd written.
In fact, I remember for one session, we actually gave the boys a choice and said, OK, would you like me to lead some activities or would you like to show us your own work? And they started chanting. <laughs> We want to play, we want to act to play. The plays they created themselves were very simple and, as you might expect, reflected village life. So you could see people farming, picking olives, being donkeys. <laughs> Some of the plays featured weddings and a big part of Palestinian weddings is a big dance that all the young men do called a dabka. Um, so we were treated to various dabka in the plays that they presented to us. even went to a lot of trouble in organising costumes and I remember one play in which all of the girls pretty much played young men so it all came complete with proper outfits and moustaches. A lot of the content of their plays um, involved violence or involved suffering or oppression, settlers coming to take over their land for instance. يعني ممكن ممكن تعمل له ايوه والمصاري ايوه ممكن تضربه والمصاري But not all the content is political, and one thing's for sure, Palestinian children know how to have a good time. As you can see from this one play in which a young man plays a pregnant mother giving birth. Some of the children there had written the most beautiful poetry, some of it very sad and moving, but, but beautiful. And on day two, when we actually gave children the opportunity to read that, just in our own social time, it kind of opened the floodgates for any child to come and share with us their thoughts or their writing. A lot of their poetry, like their plays, featured um, very political themes, lots of sadness, lots of suffering. One little girl had written a lot of poetry about her dad, who she hasn't seen for six years because he lives in Jordan and she's just not allowed to cross the border to go and see him and he's not allowed in to see her. Those smiles were very important for the earth. In order, in order to grow in this earth, we need, we need the smiles of children. The earth will not give any more uh, uh, vegetables or fruits or cro cro crops unless the, the, the children's faces have, have gone back to, the, to its normal uh, look with smiles. They go around the world singing of how, how uh, humanitarian they are and how careful we are about children's rights and children's future. And, and I can tell you now, they are the ones who stole not just my smile, but every child's smile. One girl called Serena Towney had written poetry, however, that had a light side as well as a dark side. Look, look around you and look at the stones around you. They are here, solid. 
and so your dreams should be. That's how life should be. Carry, carry the, uh, the dead flowers. Try to water them and hope that they will become alive again. If not, don't worry. You will always find a flower you can water and from that you will renew uh, your hopefulness. Renew, keep renewing and renewing. Every time you see something in you die, keep ha having faith that you can renew that. This is how life should be. Color your life with red, green, yellow, and blue. Just like how the colors around us are, they are not just one color. So is life. Life is not just one color, so is your life. It should not be just about one thing or the other. It should be a collection of colors, collection of experiences and feelings. Don't only wear black. <laughs> Hold a pen and color what you like. Draw the boundaries of the life you want. Don't make the others do it for you. You can make your life as beautiful as you want. This is how life should be. Greetings, the queen of colors. That's what she wrote in the end. This beautiful poem, or as she uh, called them, uh, Thoughts of Freedom. Uh, uh, um, she named herself the queen of colors. And that's Serene Lataune uh, from Bit Kahin, Adish Amr Khanti. And she's 13 years old. We felt it was really important to let the children show us and tell us about their own work. Um, after being with the children for a few days, we got to understand that time wasn't really allowed for children to share their own writing or their own creativity with their parents. People there have really big families, so if you've got ten children, it's very hard to give each child individual attention to that level. And certainly after Serena Towney had read her poetry out loud in our sharing event, her parents came up to us and said they couldn't believe it and they didn't even know that she was a writer. One of our participants was disabled and I was surprised at how well the Palestinian children looked after him in the workshops. When they created their own play, they even made the disabled boy called Mejid the central character, making him the groom. Um, this is very useful because in a Palestinian wedding, the groom often spends a lot of time being carried on other people's shoulders. So it was a way for him to be involved in a way which was appropriate. <laughs> I loved it when we, when we, uh, when I was the groom yeah. uh, in the wedding, and they were carrying me. It was very interesting to interview the children to find out what they'd appreciated about the project. Uh, we, we remember the dolphin and 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 uh, the uh, the park bench. Who said the park bench? The park bench. Uh, the uh, the ring we used to start with and end with and especially the balloon where the, the, the earth was right underneath us and the sky was right above uh, the balloon. Shukran. And uh, the safety, the feeling of safety inside the balloon was, was different. The balloon exercise was really appreciated 
by Majid, the disabled boy. It seemed to be something that after the workshops he could take away with him and investigate in his own imaginative way. Majid, what was your favourite bit in the drama? When we were doing the drama, when we were doing the drama, what was the best thing you did? What did you like? What did you like? What did you like? لا 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 ممتاز يعني نجحنا نجحنا ندخله جوا باللون جوا مساحة أمينة آمنة شعر الأمان يعني نجحنا. He said the best was learning how to get into this balloon and being able to actually shoot at the soldiers without them getting into me. Measured about his adventures in the balloon in his own time, and he said he'd actually been to the moon to check on it where he found something. Oh, Lindy, check it out. He found actually a bomb in the moon. Oh, I took it and threw it away. Oh, yay. Ah. And then, did you get it? It didn't explode? I will not get it. Where did you get it? It's because the last thing Ah, it exploded, but not in the moon. It exploded in another planet. Mojid said he'd taken the bomb and thrown it onto a planet on which there were no people so that it was safe to explode there. There seem to be many different outcomes for different children involved in the project. Uh, I feel like through those days I, I became more confident. I, I could stand and be silly in front of others. And also, uh, I've, I've never uh, took part in a play, but now I've, I've taken part in a couple of plays. One boy called Mahmoud was a little bit excluded by children and adults in the village, but managed to come and, and take part in a lot of the drama. Mm. Did you make any new friends through uh, uh, the drama? I got to know new kids at the same time, or I played a lot more with kids than I could play with them. Did you play with them? I was not very good. Yeah, there were some children I, I didn't play with before, but through this I got to play more with them. And it seemed like some of the exercises that we were using were then taken on by children in their own time. Uh, we, we started to play the fr 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 frozen game. Oh. Freezing game, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we really liked it. So we played in, in, in the street. Played in the street. It seemed like the children really enjoyed the project. And would you like to do more drama in the future? بتحبوا نعمل مسرح تاني في المستقبل؟ تحبوا نيجي نعمل مسرح تاني؟ أكيد. Ah, under one condition. مش أربعة أيام. Not just four days. We really enjoyed it too, and we felt like it was a really positive start at running drama workshops with a slightly therapeutic nature in a village in Palestine, and I totally agree. With what Ahmed said there, if we were going to go back, the only thing we'd change is that we'd go back for longer and try and do more and make it more sustainable so that it could really become part of the community in that village and really set a precedent for children expressing themselves there. So um, things that we'd like to make happen in the future. Some of the children asked for a talent competition and I think there would be room for that so that there's a real forum for them to share their own work. Um, we'd like to do more therapeutic work because it seemed like a lot of the children really benefited from that. I'd really like more adults or um, mature young people to be involved in the delivery of the work so that once we've gone back to the UK that there's people who've received skills and, and we've maybe received skills too from them in terms of working with the locals there. Um, I'd also be very happy to let the children design the programme so that it's initiatives that they want that they can then carry on with in their own time after the programme's finished. And also I'd like to go back in school time so that we can run drama workshops in the evening with young people. But also during the daytime we can um, go and see the disabled children who don't go to school there 
and so a very isolated with not much room for expression or creativity it would be really nice to go and work with disabled young people during the daytimes and maybe bring them together and see what opportunities exist for creative expression there.